Hi, we're Lewis and Shelley and we recently quit our jobs to travel the world. To kick off our adventures around the world, we'll be heading up to Scotland for the NC500 in Shelley's dad's camper van. This camper van is a Volkswagen T4 Caravelle and has done over 260,000 miles. Much as we have grown to love this van, having done that many miles means that this camper van does not come without its problems. In June 2021, we took this camper van to Cornwall and let's just say, it didn't make the journey home on its own four wheels. Now in April 2022, it's about to face its biggest challenge yet, Scotland's NC500, and you'll soon find out if it made it through the whole journey. So on our day of departure, we made sure everything was packed away in easily accessible places around the van. We then said goodbye to our families and our furry friends and hit the road. And so our journey began in Birmingham in England. To break up the long journey between England and Scotland, we stayed in the Lake District for the first couple of nights. And so we made the journey up the M6 motorway and came off around Windermere and saw some lovely sights along the way. For our first night in the van, we stopped off at Allswater Lake at the Side Farm campsite. This campsite overlooks Allswater Lake and at the time we went there it was really nice and peaceful and quiet. We managed to pitch up at a spot which was really secluded overlooking the lake. We spent our first night just chilling in our camping chairs and soaking in the views. It was really peaceful here and up until the morning after when fighter jets were flying above. Which was kind of cool but also kind of loud. One thing to be aware of if you do stay here is that there's no phone signal at all. Other than that, we definitely recommend this campsite. So we've come to Aero Force Waterfalls, which is just a five minute drive from the town of Glenridden, overlooking Allswater Lake. And it's really spectacular in certain parts, some of these waterfalls. So the water's really nice and calm and not even that cold, to be honest, considering it's in early spring. So Shelley's having a nice little dip, if you can see that. So I'm going to go for the ankle test. Oh, it's not quite an ankle, but almost. <laughs> Why don't you put both? Yeah, I'd say that's probably about five degrees. But quite nice though. So the trail that we followed took us about an hour to complete. It was a really steady walk, really nice and peaceful. And definitely worth a stop off if you're in the area. We then drove to Keswick which was about a 25 minute drive away. It's a really nice quaint town with loads of cute independent shops. One of the shops we went into called Poets Interiors was selling loads of quirky home decorations. After having a quick walk around the town we took the short walk from the town down to Derwent Water Lake and some of the views from there were just spectacular. The best of them all being at Friars Crag where you get a lovely view of the lake and the mountains in the distance. It was really peaceful here and I felt like I could sit here for hours and just admire the views. We then spent the night at Herdwick Croft campsite which overlooks Bassenthwaite Lake enjoying some of the local beers and enjoying a lovely sunset. Good morning, so we spent the night at Herdwick campsite, it was quite a cold night last night though, but I've got this fleece hoodie from Primark with pizzas all over it, which has kept, kept me kind of warm throughout the night, but anyway, the plan for today is to hit the road as early as we can, head on into Scotland, we'll probably stop off at Loch Lomond along the way, which is about halfway to our destination, which today will be probably Glencoe. It's probably going to take us about four or five hours of driving, so it's going to be quite a long day. We then crossed the border into Scotland. Our first port of call was Loch Lomond Shores, where we immersed ourselves in the Scottish culture by having a cold can of iron brew. Other than the lovely views at Loch Lomond Shores, there really wasn't much else to do here, so we just admired the views and then headed back to the van. We then stopped at Arica along the way and took some photos, as it's a place that Shelley's nan visited when she was a teenager. So after a long day on the road, 
about half an hour's drive away from Glencoe, we found the most perfect overnight parking spot, just overlooking Loch and Naaklees, which in Gaelic means Loch of the Armpit. The beautiful views of the Loch and the snow-capped mountains behind it was just too good to pass on in that day. So this was our first night of free camping and we couldn't have picked a better spot for it. So for the whole night we just did buy the views, cooked some dinner and chilled out. Good morning, we've just woken up to our free camping spot just outside of Loch Tuller, just 25 minutes away from Glencoe. So the plan for today is to hit the road, head over to Glencoe this morning, have some breakfast before heading on then to Fort William and a few other places on the way to Inverness to then start the NC500 tomorrow. So this is the view that we've woken up to this morning. Snow-capped mountains and lakes, or locks, and the van is just here behind us. So we packed up our things and hit the road. Some of the scenery on this stretch of road towards Glencoe was just incredible. Stopped off at the village of Glencoe for a much needed toilet break and some breakfast before admiring the lovely view of Loch Leven from the village. We then stopped off at Fort William which is a town which overlooks Loch Linney. It's quite touristy here due to how close it is to Ben Nevis. Fort William is the second largest settlement of people in the Scottish Islands behind Inverness. The town gets its name from a wooden fort that was built here in 1654 and King William III. Just a 20 minute drive from Fort William we came across the Commando Memorial which gave us a lovely view of Ben Nevis. After a couple of hours of driving we stopped off at Fort Augustus for some lunch. Fort Augustus offers lovely views of the world famous Loch Ness. Whilst eating we tried looking for the Loch Ness monster but had no luck. From Fort Augustus you can get a lot cruise of Loch Ness, but we chose not to do so as it was quite expensive. After dodging plenty of Loch Ness monster tourist traps, we headed up to Inverness. Inverness is the official start point of the NC500 road trip. In Gaelic, Inverness means Mouth of the River Ness, which is a river that leads from Loch Ness to Inverness. Overlooking the River Ness is Inverness Castle. When we were there the castle was close for redevelopment, but it still looked quite cool from the outside. Just a short five minute walk away from the castle, we came across Inverness Cathedral. The Gothic architecture and bell towers are reminiscent of Notre Dame Cathedral. We then walked round to Leakey's Bookshop, which is the largest second hand bookstore in all of Scotland, having over 100,000 books in the store. Just around the corner from Leakey's bookshop we found a really nice viewpoint overlooking the River Ness. It just so happened to be in a graveyard which sounds a bit strange but it wasn't. You could just sit there and watch the world go by. All the many seagulls. All in all we really liked Inverness. We felt like it gave us a nice final taste of civilization before we went to more remote places on the North Coast 500. We then left Inverness to find somewhere to stay for the night. We came across Fortrose Bay campsite, which is on the Black Isle, and it was probably our favourite campsite that we stopped on on the whole trip. This campsite is situated just a short walk from the town of Fortrose. The campsite itself backs onto a lovely beach. On the night that we stayed there, there was a lovely sunset to go with it. One of the main reasons we like this campsite is they had kettles to use, which was very useful after our kettle broke on the first night. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> We're staying, where are we staying? At Fort Rose Bay campsite. So the van's just there and the beach is here. So we're just eating some donuts and drinking. Tenants, like proper Scottish people would. <laughs> So, I don't think they have a Simpson down. So. <laughs> <laughs>
Good morning, just woken up from our campsite at Fortrose Bay. We're just about to head down to Channery Point to see, see the dolphins. It's, it's about a 20 to 25 minute walk away. So, so the walk from Fortrose Bay to Channery Point is along a really nice coastal path which also goes through a golf course. Channery Point is one of the best places in the world to watch battle nosed dolphins from the shore. A spit of sand and gravel running out into Inverness Firth means that the dolphins may be only metres away as they fish and play in the strong tides. And just in case you don't see any dolphins, there might also be seals at Channery Point. Hey, look. Look. If you're expecting David Attenborough style footage, then you probably came to the wrong place. Despite that, it's still quite nice to watch them swimming in the sea from the distance. So we literally jumped straight out of the shower, which is why I look like this and ran down to see the dolphins because it says that you should come an hour after low tide and an hour before high tide so we had to get here for about half eight so we literally quickly walked down here and we saw so many dolphins yeah it was either that we saw so many or so many of the same dolphins but nevertheless it's still dolphins so and two seals that yeah were two, two seals as well so that was really good and the beach was so nice yeah, really not nice, calm, peaceful beach. A short five minute drive away from Fortrose Bay is Fairy Glen Falls. Fairy Glen was a really good first stop off on the NC500 route. We both really enjoyed it, it was a nice steady walk and it was really pretty. So we're just walking back down from Fairy Glen Falls. It was a really nice walk up. It only took how long did it take? Probably about 20 minutes or so, or 25 up the top, and then about then the same back down. But then we did keep stopping along yeah, the way. Yeah, we stopped too. a few times along the way to take some photos and videos and stuff. But yeah, it's really good once you get up there. Some of the biggest waterfalls we've probably seen in, in a long time. They weren't that big. They were pretty big. Anyway. Yeah, we're heading back to the van now. That record didn't last too long as we then headed to Rogie Falls, which is about a half an hour drive away. Between August and September, you may even see salmon migrating up the river at this waterfall. The walk down to these waterfalls is a quick five minute walk through some dense woodland. Unfortunately when we visited the bridge was actually closed for repairs. We then left Rogi Falls and followed the NC500 route towards Doorknock where we planned on free camping at Doorknock Beach because a lot of blog posts recommended that we did that. However when we got there there was no overnight parking signs everywhere which became quite a common occurrence on this trip. So instead we drove literally round the corner to Doorknock Camping and Caravan Park which is literally right on the beach anyway.
The thing that we liked the most about this campsite is not only it was on the beach, but also it was only about a 10 minute walk into the village of Dornoch. So that's what we did that night. We headed to get some local beers in a little pub called the Old Court House. Hello. We've woken up at Dornoch Beach and Caravan. No, Dornoch. Dornoch Camping and Caravan Park. But it's meant to rain all day from about 12, so we're going to go for a walk on the beach now go to a place called Coco Mountain which apparently does the best hot chocolate and then where are we going this afternoon? Oh, we'll probably just have a walk around door knock in general and then we'll probably head up a bit further north later maybe go to Dunrobin Castle and then we'll probably head up and get as, as far north as we possibly can potentially finishing the day in John O'Groats but we'll see so when we're walking down to the beach we've come across this play area which Lewis wants to have a go at but these monkey bars are so high I don't know if you can tell Are you scared? No, I'm not so I'm scared It's all quite high though and I'm not, and quite, there's quite a few of them as well This is you Jim for the day <laughs> How is a kid meant to be able to do this? You made that look easy. I cheated on the last one though. Because I'm just about long enough to fit I got to, to reach the last step. No, you get to go down and the then slide. And this is like the uh, scariest of them all. <laughs> <laughs> Do a seat drop. Just a short five minute walk from Doorknock Camping and Caravan Park is Doorknock Beach. Panoramic views at this beach are just insane. I could imagine spending the whole day here on a sunny summer's day. Even the wet weather on this day seemed to add to the ambience of this beach. Walk from Dornock Beach to Dornock Village takes you past the last place in which someone was legally, in inverted commas, executed for witchcraft in the British Isles. The execution took place in 1727 and is now marked by this stone in someone's front garden. The town of Dornock is really nice to walk around. It feels like you've stepped back in time to Victorian Scotland. One of the main attractions at Dornock is Coco Mountain where apparently they sell the best hot chocolate. Shelly's doing the taste test. That's like eating the chocolate in a drink. I think that's, I think that's a thumbs up then. Yeah. Is it the best chocolate in the world? And so after that in-depth review, we headed to Dunrobin Castle. Dunrobin Castle is located just outside the town of Golfsby and about a half an hour drive from Dornoch. Dunrobin Castle was built in 1845 and is the stately home for Clan Sutherland. The castle itself reminds me of a castle which you'd find in the Kingdom of Far Far Away in the Shrek universe. In the castle grounds there is a museum, which to say the least is creepy. I feel like Ace Ventura right now. Mm. Honestly can't believe what they've done to Zac Efron. It's a real shame. Choose your fighter. Included within the admission price are falconry displays which are really cool to watch. All in all, Dunrobin Castle is definitely worth a stop off, especially if it's on a rainy day. There's plenty to do within the ticket price and it's definitely good value for money.
We then took an hour's drive to the Waligo Steps. Looks a bit slippy at the moment, so I'll have to take it quite steady. Shelley's had enough. I, I think it's really quite spectacular some of these cliffs to be honest. It's a bit of a treacherous walk down, especially in these conditions, but and the water's like a turquoise colour and the seagulls are flying around. It's definitely worth the trek down. Shelley's finally met a, met a local that she understands. <laughs> As the weather wasn't too great on the day, we quickly passed through Wick and headed up to John O'Groats. So we've arrived at John O'Groats, uh, we've just pulled up at the car park and it occurred to us that if we pay £4.40 we can park on this car park overnight with toilets just a two minute walk across the car park or the other option is to pay £24 and park over there. For us it seemed like an easy decision really. And you probably guess what we chose. So we parked up for the night on our trusty cheap car park and enjoyed a lovely sunset at John O'Groats. And so that concludes part one. Coming up in part two, we continue our journey along the North Coast 500, find some incredible free parking spots, see some of the best beaches we've seen in the UK, see plenty more waterfalls and push our van to its absolute limit. If you enjoyed our video, please let us know by giving us a like, dropping us a comment, and please subscribe so you can continue following our journey.